Welcome, everybody, to another edition of How to Beat Your Addiction with John Giordano. I'm your co-host, Scott Jones. And uh, again, uh, we're able to reach out and get some guests, uh, even with the uh, COVID and everything else going on. Luckily, we can use uh, programs like Zoom and other ones. I want to give them a shout out for doing a good job uh, to connect with people. And today we're connecting uh, with Dr. Yvette Espinosa Fernandez. Did I get that right? You did. I did. Thank you. Well, with a name like Jones, I don't do really good with the other names. You know, it just I don't think have to think hard about it. But, uh, you know, John, this is uh, this is a doctor that you know quite well, right? Yes, I do. She's my doctor, by the way. And all I can tell you is this. And I don't mean to embarrass you, Yvette, but she's terrific. All right, okay. Most doctors treat symptoms. She doesn't treat symptoms. She treats what's driving the symptoms. And that's, to me, what healthcare is all about. And... Um, the bottom line is, is that uh, if you really want to get healthy, that's what you have to do. And it all depends how healthy do you want to be. Um, they have a wellness center. Well, anyway, uh, Dr. Yvette, uh, why don't you tell us about yourself and and your company sure. and what you do? And Thank you. That's so sweet of you. So the way we kind of um, approach medicine is basically at the root and then kind of stemming out and seeing what's causing all of, you know, your, your symptoms. Um, disease has a bunch of different names, but we don't kind of approach it that way. We, we take a look at it from a common cause of inflammation, genetics, environmental influx, and then kind of see, you know, what's causing that disease process. And um, we don't specify disease into different categories. We actually just try to establish what's going on from the from the root cause um, that's causing, you know, inflammation, which is leads to DNA damage and issues in your GI tract, which makes up the, the majority of your DNA that you make. So, well, that's that's what we talk about all the time. When uh, oh, by the way, a few people, anybody out there really likes these podcasts, please give us a comment and give us a thumbs up. Uh, we appreciate that, so we can continue and and help as many people as we possibly can. Um, could you give Eva? Could you give us some of the, the the methodologies that you use, and you know what uh, what you guys do? Definitely. Um, like I mentioned, we kind of approach everything, you know, right there at, at the root. So a lot of you know chronic issues and illness, whether it's autoimmunity, cancer, addiction, everything is set off by a by a, a whole big plane of inflammation. So we try to create a environment in your body that is going to be less reactive to inflammation and just kind of a, a, a better place for you to plant your, you know, your seeds basically and not create so many weeds, if you will. So we, we basically take on different, different approaches to your amino acids, your organic acids, um, different issues with, you know, infections that could be causing issues. And then we see if any of that is to blame for what's happening in the way that you're feeling, whether it's brain fog or fatigue. And then we find that there's a lot of things that we can do to create change and people start to feel better as they start to get basically the nutrition that they need to get. It's, it's, that's how we approach it. Well, you know, you know what I like about it because well, you're treating me. So, and um, <laughs> actually the way I look at it is, is the same way you look at it is you treat the gut where autoimmune diseases come from inflammation, uh, what people don't realize, and they just like, they don't pay attention to it. And the, the bottom line, the food we eat, uh, I know you work with um, food plans, and you also work with uh, the people that want to lose weight. And um, you work with the microbiome, microbiota, the, the gut, the flora, and things like that. And um, some of the methodology you use, I know, like um, peptides, for instance. So you want to talk about that a little bit? Or? Sure. So, you know, back in the day, a lot of people would use growth hormone and, and, and they were trying to make your chromosome stay nice and long and healthy so you could feel the vitality and feel younger. But in time, we noticed that that really wasn't a good idea. So peptides, is, it's, a, it's a derivative that kind of works its way into communicating with the pituitary in your brain in more of a natural way to let you know that you need to create these precursors so that you have longevity and you have health. 
And um, it's just a really good product, you know, and, and it's, it's been used a- across the board from like, you know, um, people with hair loss to erectile dysfunction to, you know, a, a wide, wide variety of, of different things. It's used a lot with skin and elasticity because that's what it does. It rejuvenates, it allows cells to do what they need to do more efficiently um, without the risk it's associated with, you know, growth hormone. But also fat loss around the stomach, right? Oh, yes, 100, 110%. Absolutely. We have a lot of, you know, what's called the visceral fat, right? So it's that fat that kind of sticks around the intestine, you know, the, the, the midsection there right around your, your belly button. And that's a huge issue, mainly for women and some men as well. But women in general, mainly after they've, you know, had children and stuff, it's just very difficult to get that whole circumference in order. And this really helps just, you know, burn the fat and, and, you know, brings down weight very, very easily, you know, together with obviously modification of your diet, right. And, and, uh, and exercise. Well, you know, what, what also is, is interesting that, um, you, you have a wellness center and, uh, what is the wellness center called again? Advice for optimal wellness. Advice for optimum wellness. Yes. And if anybody really wants to get well, it all depends how well you want to get, you have to see Dr. Espinosa. Okay. And also what they do is IVs, right? Yes, we do. And uh, glutathione. You want to talk about a little bit about that? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. So um, we, we take on the approach of personalizing the IVs. We're not your um, kind of cookie cutter IV uh, therapy lounge. Um, we, we really dedicate ourselves to the functional medicine approach. So it's dedicated to analyzing what your micronutrients look like and then creating an IV that's personalized to you in specific. So if you show that, uh, you know, that your micronutrients are really all kind of deficient, then we know that we have a leaky gut and we know that we have issues going on that are causing inflammation. So no matter how much you try to supplement, it's not going to be absorbed because you have leaky gut. So um, we, we basically start off, you know, taking a look at that and trying to heal your intestines so you can actually, you know, absorb the stuff you're trying to take because the goal is not to have somebody on IV therapy forever. If not, you know, you use it routinely at the beginning, but as they start to get better and your intestine starts to heal, then you, you're, you're, you're going to need IV less and less. And thank goodness you're, you're taking in what you need through your diet and through supplementation. But that's, um, you really, it's a fine line of learning what it is that you're deficient in so that you could actually feel much, much better. So it, you know, it takes care of brain fog and, and you can also bind things if you need to. So if you have a high amount of metals and things like that in your system, then you go ahead and you can bind it through IV therapy. But the goal eventually is, you know, to, to only only give you what you need. Sometimes less is more. Oh, I like that. You know, well, me, I'm an addict. Babe. More is, is better. <laughs> so, you know, the less <laughs> is more. Uh, you know what? A lot of people don't understand what leaky gut is and uh, and H. pylori. Could you give them a little insight into that so they understand the terminology that we're using? Yes. So many times, you know, mainly uh, when people are really not feeling well and they have like all this fatigue and they don't really know where it's coming from, they, they, you know, they find that a lot of your, your, you know, your B complexes and a lot of different components that you need to make energy are deficient, but it's, it's actually because the, the lining in your intestine from just either damage from just doing the wrong thing for so long or stress, you know, a wide variety of things can create those, those junctions in your intestine to just let everything out, including everything that you're eating. So then your, your nutrients get really deficient. And that's why we use IV therapy to bypass your intestine in, in the hopes that you would, you know, absorb and you do, and, you, and it, it improves. But at the end of the day, I always tell everybody, your intestine has to be able to work properly so that your brain function is good you're, you're on target and you feel well. So, and your DNA is being replicated successfully. So, and then you're less likely to create cellular damage, right? So you have to be able to have nice tight junctions and not have all that stuff secreting out. So that's, you know, that, that's how we kind of approach things. Always heal the gut and then use IV therapy. And then just eventually you'll be able to do better and better. 
Well, glutathione also helps with heavy metals as well as plus being an antioxidant and, right. and uh, helping with free radicals. Yes, 100%. Glutathione is a master antioxidant. So many times um, we take a look at people's genetics because they don't even know that they're walking around with something called a GSMT gene that is completely absent, which means that you have the, the natural inability to actually process glutathione. So you have to be given glutathione IV. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that until they get really, really sick. But, um, you know, glutathione is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful molecule. It does a lot of really good things in your body. You know, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, you go to a regular doctor, they don't talk about this stuff, unfortunately. Um, right. Dr. Espinosa has been, uh, what, 20 years a doctor? 18. 18. Oh, excuse Close. me. <laughs> Who's counting? <laughs> and um, you, you were, were, weren't you in emergency medicine for pediatrics also, if I remember? I was. That's right. Absolutely. Right. But, so, like, you know, you, you, you learn to to practice medicine in a more efficient way and it takes your own health crisis, right? Which I think happens with most doctors that kind of go into this field. Something actually strikes you and you go, wait a second, you know, medicine kind of sucks this way, you know, and, and because they, they, they don't look at everything, right? So if your kidney's off, then you go to the renal doctor and if your, you know, brain's off, you go to the neurologist and you, well, but who's treating like the bottom line of everything, you know? so. Um, and, and that's what I thought was really unfortunate about medicine, but that's why I think, you know, things need to be geared towards just treating the person before all these other symptoms happen. Well, you know, it's, it's really interesting that you say that because, uh, our healthcare system, they do not comp treat a comprehensively people. What they do is they do a, like, a an overall one shoe fits all type of a thing, unfortunately. And um, and what happens is, is people, they miss what's really driving all of this. You know, I always say we're walking cash registers for the pharmaceutical companies. You know, they treat the symptoms and they give you and they keep throwing medicine at you instead right. of saying, hey, what's causing this? Right. And I always said that. And what people don't understand about addiction is that the microbiome. OK, and that's why we're talking about the gut. OK, is where serotonin and dopamine is manufactured. So if that's a mess and your vagus nerve, which goes up to your brain that, that carries the, the dopamine and serotonin is not functioning properly either, you're gonna have a, a whole total mess. And that's what Dr. Espinoza treats. She looks at people comprehensively. You know, I don't wanna go to a doctor and, and they just give you a regular uh, blood test and they go, oh yeah, yeah, take two of these, take three of these, call me in the morning. No. OK, right. because our diets and our lifestyles and the lack of exercise causes a multitude of problems within this beautiful body that God created. And then the body we created is not too hot, <laughs> to put it that way. And um, so what, what else do you guys do? Uh, you do? Don't you do COVID testing, too, right? Right. Well, because of, you know, coronavirus, we, we went down that, that, that alley. So we, we do, you know, rapid antigen testing. We do antibody testing. Um, we're, we're, we're doing the more interesting part now, which is a monoclonal antibody um, IV uh, treatment, which is within the first 10 days of COVID. And that has wonderful results. And um, we, uh, we use exosomes as well um, in COVID. Um, the University of Miami is doing some research on that. So it hasn't been set in stone, but the results are very, very positive. And we're, we're very blessed to say that we haven't had any of our patients hospitalized. So that's, that's a, a really good thing. Um, we've had well over a thousand patients at this point and uh, everybody has done well, thank goodness. Um, but, you know, we basically always try to get down to the nitty gritty and, and, and that's, you know, why did the sicker ones get sick, you know, and, and it's usually the obesity will be there, the hypertension, the diabetes, and that's who it, you know, is your vulnerable population. So we make every effort to let them understand that that's, you know, that they're, you know, at that risk and that that's why it happened and hopefully make a, a change for them to, to fix the way that they're living their lives, you know. 
Could you explain what, uh, you know, you, you talked about these two modalities, the exosomes and the other one uh, treating uh, the virus. Yeah, what, what are they? I, I, our audience may not understand what we're yeah. talking about. So, so the monoclonal antibody is, uh, it's a wonderful therapy that was developed by Regeneron and it was developed also by Eli Lilly. And um, it's basically using your body uh, to see the fact that there are antibodies to coronavirus in your system and therefore create a, a better response, get it under control faster and therefore decrease symptomology and the need for hospitalization. So uh, there, there are antibodies to coronavirus that are given to you IV. So we, we, we take those to your home. We're, we're lucky and blessed enough that the government has given us the access to do that. And uh, so we're bringing it to our patients. Um, and then the uh, second modality, which is the exosomes, um, is uh, that's currently being researched. The government hasn't gotten on board because things have to kind of go through their whole EUA process and get approved. Um, and hopefully, you know, that will that that'll open up a window for the for the sicker uh, people. Um, and that is it, it's basically a, a a system to just decrease inflammation in your body significantly. So COVID causes a huge amount of oxidative stress on your body. And that's what this target. So our biggest components there are going to be the exosomes and the glutathione to 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 basically combat it. Um, in bringing down oxidative stress. See, what I, what I always tell people is that, uh, you know, these, these exosomes are also, they call them RNA messengers. And yes. they come off a stem cell wall. And what they do is they send information to the next cell. So they're really like unbelievable as far as inflammation goes. I know because I took them and yes. my friends are taking them. And, um, you know, it's, it's even safer than stem cells because stem cells can cause other problems too. Um, which they you know, which they found out, but exosomes is the new frontier. And that's what I like about, but you is that you're, you're on the new frontier. You're not behind You're forward thinking. And, and that's what we have to have. So anybody's really interested, uh, we'll give you the website to go to, um, you know, this is not about trying to the, the money part of this and all. this is about your health and your life. Because most people don't know about these different techniques, these different modalities to really help them to have a better quality of life. You know, getting older is great in one way, but it's not so great if you're sick. So if you don't have health, you don't have anything. I don't care how much money you have. I know people that would give all their money just for their health. Right. So that's the important part. And that's, that's what these podcasts are about. And this also segues into addiction. Most addicts don't eat properly. They don't exercise. Okay. And we keep looking at them psychologically. We're not looking at them medically. Right. And like we talk about leaky gut, we talk about H. pylori, we talk about closed head injuries that cause behavioral problems and, and suicidal ideation, all kinds of things. That's why I go to Dr. Espinosa. I want a doctor that's going to look at me as a whole person, not just a head walking around. And it's so yeah. important that people don't understand that if you have depression and anxiety, it's not just a psychological issue. It's a whole body issue. And that's what she treats. And she's helped many of my friends already. And, um, you know, when something's good, I, I do my best to turn people on to it. And, you know, we talk about um, the, the visceral fat uh, around the stomach, that's where people get heart attacks. And that's how they have, uh, as you know, right, uh, Dr. Espinosa? Yes, absolutely. You know, yeah, very tough to get rid of, but very important to get rid of. Yeah. Yeah, and our food supply isn't the greatest. You know, uh, we have to, you know, our sugars and you processed foods and GMOs and all the stuff that we're eating because it's profit driven, not people driven. And, and that's a serious problem. And what's happening is we have the so much obesity in this country. Uh, people think because they drink a diet Coke, <laughs> that it's okay, but they don't realize that it doesn't process properly turns into sugar anyway. So, uh, you know, you're putting chemicals in you and trying to hope that you, you're going to lose weight. Yeah. And, uh, you have a, a weight loss program also, don't you? And that you, you, you address all those issues because I know they're important. Absolutely. It is. 
It's, uh, we deal a lot with, you know, women and children, um, you know, and it's so far reaching the, the issue with obesity and where it starts. And, um, you know, from childhood onward, um, you're kind of an example of what you've been brought up in and not really realizing what does that mean? What is really a processed food? What is, you know, so they, there's no concept there, right? It was just, okay, I need to get the fast food and I need to get dinner done. And, um, even in the snacks and 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 the stuff. so I think you know bringing on that knowledge of just making these simple moves into what really is healthier and and letting people and educating people into what that means is super important because a lot of things you know when when these big companies they they finally were like wait a second people don't want to buy this product because you know, it, it's, it's got this bad connotation, then all of a sudden they'll switch it over and make the box green and say that it's greener and that it's healthier. And so then, it, you know, you go down the, 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 the aisle at Publix and you're like, oh, well, this is all good for me. And it's all like, not the case at all, right? Because it's just a trick. It's a trick so that visually you think it's healthier for you, yet it's still got a ton of carbohydrates. And if people would just learn just that little bit and you can like mainly with your podcast and everything and you can get that out just to know how bad sugar can be you know uh in the realm of addiction and in the realm of of just of everything because it's if they could just understand those labels and what that carbohydrate means and how it converts to sugar um and you know the more you educate people the, the better it'll be but they'll keep making their money tricking you they're they use the term organic a lot now to fool people right. and uh it oh, really it has no real meaning anyway because it's right. not regulated so right. you know they call it organic all natural but it's but it's not i wanted to ask you a question back if you don't mind uh, going back you, you were you were really more involved in traditional medicine for a for a while uh when you were saying you worked in emergency rooms and everything else um you know i, I guess there's two parts is you know why the change in you what what changed your passion and secondly how do we how do we approach people to say that i know this is what you're inundated with take a pill take a pill take a pill um it's on the tv commercials uh, they're teaching uh, patients to go and ask their doctors about certain medicines just because they want to sell them how do we change people's thinking to move towards more of a functional approach uh without without thinking they're abandoning everything they've ever learned i mean do you follow what i'm saying yeah i mean well, I, I think innately, nobody wants to be on medicine. You know, I think that that's what I find more often than anything is they'll tell me, I can't stand the fact that I'm taking this for cholesterol and this for blood pressure and this for that. So people hate that. So I always gravitate to that and tell them, well, make up your mind. Do you want to be on a bunch of medications or do you want to be able to just manage it by what you do in your lifestyle, right? So for me, um, I mean, I did emergency medicine uh, my entire career, basically. Um, and it was, it was a type of medicine that you come in sick, you do what I tell you and you feel better and that's it. I mean, it's, it's very simple. You may, you're there to make people feel better. It's very straightforward and they're willing to listen to you. So that for me was a wonderful thing because one of the biggest obstacles that you have in medicine is that you have a lot of non-compliance across the board, right? You have a lot of people who, you, you can tell them and I can tell them and educate them and teach them all kinds of things. But if you don't want to be off those medications and you don't want to make the move, then, you know, so you have to be willing to, to do that. Um, but I left medicine, I'm not left medicine, but I left medicine in the sense of the ER because, because I got sick myself. So like, I think you find a lot of clinicians that go into functional medicine because something happens to you in your life. You know what I mean? So, you know, I had a horrible diagnosis. I knew I had horrible inflammation in my body and I had to find out why. And when you go to doctors and all they tell you is, well, take this pill, that pill, that's the same thing, right? So all of a sudden I'm on the other end going, wait a minute, you know, there's nothing more that you can offer me than, than that. And so that becomes a problem. And, uh, you know, I've talked to John like so many times that in, you know, in medical school, that's how you get taught. You get taught from the approach of, okay, so this is a disease process. You're going to take this medicine for it. This is a disease process. You're going to take that medicine for it. Right. So it's, um, 
you know, it, it's, it's ingrained in you. So it's very difficult for that doctor to think outside of that box unless either you see it for what it is, you know what I mean? And you're like, wow, no, I, I want to bring this into my practice because you're more of a holistic practitioner or something happens to you that's detrimental and you have to shift the way you think so that you can help not only yourself, but everybody around you. Right. You, you, you must have had some great aha moments uh, oh, yeah. in, in that journey. <laughs> and I'm sure you get to see them with your patients now, your clients. Right. You get to see their aha moments. And I guess that's what we want people to know is, right. you know, don't assume you know everything. There's so many things out there that you probably haven't tried. Yeah, you know? 100%. And at first, it's, at first, you talk to your patients like almost every other day like you talk to them so much because it takes a lot of support to kind of understand and then when it becomes routine that that's how you have to live your life there's almost that fear of like oh my god I haven't talked to you in three months and I'm like it's okay <laughs> not about that like I'm not supposed to see you that often because if you do it right then you just do it right and you feel better and that's the goal you know it's interesting I'm listening to you speak and I'm saying to myself this sounds like addiction it's the same, the same process. I mean, we're addicted to a certain lifestyle that we don't even realize we're addicted to. Right. You know, we're addicted to older, you know, you know the older people, you know, look, I'm 74. I don't take any medications. I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have diabetes. I don't have any of that stuff. And I want to continue living a quality life. Do I do it perfect? No. I do the best I can. And I right. get support by my doctor and I get support you know, by my wife, she reminds me, Don, you didn't do this. And I said, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, and another thing that we're not talking about is water. People yeah. don't realize how important water is. You know, to me, water is going to be the next gold. Okay. Because water is in short supply and good water is in short supply. And, and that's another issue. Um, and the bottom line, if you don't drink enough water, you know, and I, I'm sure Dr. Espinosa could tell you this, is that how are you going to clean your toxins out of your body? You know, that's like putting a couple of drops of water on the floor and trying to clean your floor. I mean, it doesn't work. you got to put enough to clean it, okay? So yeah. water is important. If you don't hydrate, when addicts come into treatment, they're protein deficient and they're, they're um, volume depleted, meaning they didn't drink enough water. And uh, they got all kinds of problems. So those are important things. And that's what she teaches. And, and I love her for it. I mean, listen, I can't tout you enough, okay? Um, uh -huh. To me, I got blessed uh, to know you. And, and I tell everybody else, look, the only problem is, is that the insurance companies don't like these methods, okay? Because they're in cahoots, I believe. That's my own bias with the pharmaceutical companies. So... You know, they want to keep you sick, you know, just like cars. We have tires that don't wear out, but they don't put that on the market. You put a whole place out of business. And we have things that can really cure people, and they don't want that either. I know that sounds sinister, but that's what it's all about in our country and a lot of countries. It's a profit before anything else. So you got to be like, you have to learn about what's going on in life and what you can do. And um, I know we're at a point, we're going to start wrapping up the show, but I wanted to just really make a point really clear. And I think both of you need to address this, or I would have liked it if you both did. You're not telling people to throw all your medicines away without having some plan B. Am I, am I correct? We're not, no, it's not suggested because I know we're talking about, you know, some medication and people, your first answer should not be reach for a pill. I mean, there may be times, but it should never be your first answer. Uh, right. But you're not telling people at all to abandon everything they're doing uh, without a plan B. They need to come and talk to somebody first, right? A hundred percent. And there has to be the willingness to, to commit to that. I, you know, if there is no commitment to doing it, that, and I always tell everybody that, then there's, no, there's nothing I can do for you. There's nothing that, you know, you need to do it for yourself, you know, and you, you have to be able to be, you know, willing to make that, that commitment. But conventional medicine and functional medicine they work together. It's like, it's like the cancer patient who comes to me, it's like, I don't want to do this and I don't want to do that. I don't work like that because they can work together. They can work together and you'll have great success if they work together. So, you know, um, 
we try to do it as holistically as possible with the commitment of the person and but you need you know many many things are you know foundational and they, and you will require some medication so no it's it's not like we're completely opposed to 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 conventional medication. That's and John, you could speak to that too, because with the addiction treatment and everything you've done in years, there has to be a marriage of both. Absolutely. You know, first of all, medicine acts quick, okay? But you're not fixing the problem most often, okay? The other the holistic approach is a process and it takes time, it takes consistency. And like you said, it takes commitment. Okay, so we're not saying drop your medication by no means. What you can do is your blood work doesn't lie. I'll put it to you that way, okay? So as you get better, you can see what's going on with your body, how you feel. And then when we do, you know, we test your blood and we test what's going on, your urine and all these different methods that we use to see, you know, what's going on with you, then you can start possibly titrating off medication or maybe you have to stay on it. We're not saying yeah. either or. We're saying, look, we want to look at everything. The things that we can fix will help you fix. The things that we can't, stay where you are. Just make sure you're always working in conjunction with somebody who is trained, who understands. Uh, don't assume from this podcast that you figured out the key to the universe. Uh, <laughs> go go and see Dr. Uh, Dr. Espinoza um, Fernandez. Uh, Call John, go to his website. Uh, they're going to hook you up with people or talk to you directly. But don't just do things on your own. We, we can't stress that enough. But there are other ways. Start looking for them. Right. Well, listen, here's the deal. I, I don't ask anybody to do something I don't do myself. My first thing my friends ask me when I want to turn them on to Dr. Espinosa, are you doing it? I said, well, I wouldn't be turning you on to it if I wasn't doing it. You know, I do the peptides. I do the exosomes. You know, I do the, the the food plan better and better and better. All right. I'm drinking the water. I got my gallon jug so I can know how much water I drink. You know, before I was doing, you know, glasses of water, but I forgot how many I drank. So now I have a jug. I look at the jug. Oh, I didn't drink enough today. You know, oh, I did good today. So there's little tricks that you learn how, how to do this and accomplish this. And look, yes, it, sometimes it costs money. But you know something, I, I, I remember kids coming in the treatment saying, well, we don't, I don't have any money. And I looked down at their sneakers, their $300 sneakers. Oh, you know where to put your money? On your feet. What about your life? You know, so what's important to you out there? Is it your health or your wealth? Period. Doctor, thank you so much for your time. We know you're very busy. We appreciate you taking your time out of your day and sharing thank your information. You. Hopefully, thank we can get together and do some more on this, right? Well, let's go over her website. What's your website again? Adviceforwellness.com. Adviceforwellness.com. I love that. That's perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, phone numbers, all the information you have is you need is will be right up on your screen there. Um, but again, is there anything you'd like to close with, Doc? Oh, I'd like to just, you know, thank John for the opportunity of being on. And I'm so, so grateful to you both. Thank you so much. It's been an honor to be on. Thank you. All righty. Well, out there, come on, man. Get committed to your health. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Once again, thank you to Dr. Uh, Yvette uh, Espinoza Fernandez. Uh, of course, John Giordano, I'm your co-host, Scott Jones. You've been watching How to Beat Your Addiction. Don't forget to like this, share it with your friends, and uh, click for notifications so you'll find out when our next show will be. We'll catch you next time right here. Bye. Mm -hmm.